a Livorno light fitting, commonly sold by shops like uh, Aldi or Lidl in the UK. And this one is designed for outdoor use and is based on just standard 5mm LEDs in here. I mean, it's quite a smart effect. It projects, I would say, a fairly dotty sort of pattern of light around the outside. But let's take it apart and see what sort of construction it is, so I shall unplug it. And one of the first things I noticed about this is, well, obviously you're not going to be able to change the LEDs. Once you've, if you've installed this light fitting and it fails, then that's it. You're going to have to get a new light fitting. Unless you could repair it yourself, which is only the sort of thing that people like us could do. Uh, there is a ventilation hole in the bottom of, of it. This is good. This is to avoid water building up inside this and reduce the risk of condensation. That's the best way to do that. I've already had a go at kind of opening this and I used brute force and it came apart like this. This is just held together by a white silicon schmoo and it divides into two circuit boards and it looks as though the main supply comes straight in uh, onto the bottom circuit board here. So let's remove these screws and we'll take a look under here at the main circuit board. And can I get this out? I may have to... I may have to get this uh, bottom bit from the case as well. So the circuit board, initial thoughts here, are that this looks as though it's based on a capacitive dropper. It's got a bridge rectifier. Um, it's got what looks like a PTC thermistor, which is unusual. That's a basically an overcurrent device. I'm not sure why they'd have it like that. It does a circle of LEDs, and I'm guessing that this circuit board here is just another circle of LEDs uh, that are basically connected in series of those ones so that all the LEDs are in series. That's why when one LED fails, you're going to lose the lot. That's what, the sort of thing that happens with these. Is this going to liberate anything? No, it's not going to liberate anything. I may have to, I may have to get destructive here. I shall explore this further. Oh, there's actually a layer of clear plastic in there. Right, I will have to explore it further. Right, tell you what, uh, I shall pop the cover off here and we'll try and get that circuit board out and then I can reverse engineer it. And we'll look at the circuit diagram. We can see what the function of that PTC thermistor is. I'm guessing it's basically an overcurrent device. Ignore the fact that this has got uh, earth here, but I've only connected two wires. I'll make sure this doubly is unplugged. Uh, it's just the flex that I had available. It is effectively well insulated inside, as far as I can see. Everything's in sort of plastic trays. But there's always that risk that, uh, because it's metal, that it should really be grounded. I should put that cable out of the way. Now, how is this going to come apart? Can I get this circuit board out? This circuit board is lifting up, but is not coming out all the way. What if I push this wire in here? I shall push the wire in as far as it goes and see if that liberates anymore. No, it's not really liberating anymore. I may have to just reach in with a pair of snips and cut this. That seems like a good idea. This saves time. I have cut it. It saved time. This is a bit we need for the reverse engineering. I see one surface mount resistor in the back. Why have they done that? That's odd. Um, can I get this apart anymore? Not really. It is glued completely together, as is this one. It's just where I cut myself in the, on the metal. Uh, I may just... I'll pause momentarily, I'll reverse engineer the circuit board and we'll take a look at the circuitry and we'll see what the function of a... Uh, oh, I can see what that is. That's odd. That is a self-resetting fuse that they've put in series of the whole circuit. That's very strange. It is rated for a mains voltage, I believe. I wonder why they've used a self-resetting fuse, unless it was the, like that thing that if you use an ordinary fuse with capacitive droppers, if you've got a lot of electrical arcing in the vicinity and um, something else failing, it can actually cause a lot of current through this circuit and that could pop the fuse. But you'd think that would strain the LEDs as well. It looks as though they've put a bit of thought into this design. It's very strange. Right, tell you what, I shall pause momentarily to reverse engineer this. Right, well, that took a bit of reverse engineering. Very, 
Weird circuitry indeed. Uh, lots of things to try and protect the LEDs from just blowing up. So we've got two circuit boards, the main circuit board and the satellite circuit board, which is over at this side. And it starts off with the PTC uh, fuse, which I believe is rated for 250 volts, around about 200 micro milliamps. And then it goes to the 330 nanofarad uh, capacitor with a 510k discharge resistor actually mounted underneath the capacitor itself to save space. It then goes through a bridge rectifier, full bridge rectifier, and it has a 100 volt 10 microfarad smoothing capacitor, a transient suppression component, bi-directional one, and then a 51k resistor to provide a slight load, presumably to help make sure this discharges, to make sure the LEDs go out in a controlled manner and you don't get that thing of leakage glowing. I wonder why they've used the PTC thermistor here. I get the feeling that in certain circumstances when you get arcing and electrical noise, capacitive droppers like this can actually pass a fair amount of current. And with that, the little bypass capacitor of the LEDs and down here, it's possible that you could get a sort of burst of high current. And that uh, self-resetting fuse is presumably for that reason. It's quite a high value, though. I wonder if it would ever really fail. Um... So the first section of LEDs, this rim of 12 LEDs around the outside, is here, and it has that little capacitor across it so that if there's any excessive sort of spikes and noise, it will be shunted across those. And likewise, there's another capacitor here, which I, I drew in afterwards, that's why it's got to be sort of detour around the 51k bit. But it's uh, on the satellite circuit board, and it bypasses all the circuitry, so that any noise will just go through this capacitor, this capacitor, it will just basically protect the LEDs and circuitry from that. The circuitry on the satellite PCB has a current regulator, but it's actually based on a 78LO5 voltage regulator. It's not an uncommon way of doing this. They've got a 300 ohm resistor here going from the output of the regulator to the ground connection so that whatever current is flowing through that regulator is effectively flowing through all the LEDs as well. And by setting a known resistor value, it works out as, let me bring in a little calculator, uh, I equals V, which is the five volt the regulator's uh, regulating to, divided by the 300 ohms, which is across the output. And that gives about 16 milliamps. So 16 or 17 milliamps will be flowing through these LEDs. And because that's in series the whole circuit, it'll be flowing through the whole lot of LEDs on both circuit boards. There is another 51K resistor here for some reason, and another 300 ohm resistor here. Um, presumably just means of protecting against inrush current to uh, the regulator. I'm not really sure why they've done that. But I'm guessing maybe they've maybe they just wanted to put another 300 ohm resistor in, uh, resistor in series with the main LED circuit, but they just decided to put it off on the satellite circuit board instead. But it's very strange circuitry. The construction is also strange. It is a whole bolted together. It's like this section that was coupling the the body onto the sort of housing is just a square section with a little spacer, a little cylindrical spacer. And then the usual threaded rod that you find inside these things with the plastic inserts at each end to actually protect against uh, chaffing of the cable. It's been treated as a double insulated fixture, but the fixture does have a ground uh, that connects onto the actual main bodywork itself. Uh, it's an interesting construction. Likewise, all the even the bottom LED bit has its own cable grip uh, before it goes into the main circuit board at the bottom. And uh, it has its... Uh, chromium surround that sandwich around the LEDs for visual effect and for light uh, reflection and then the little cover that goes on top to hold those in, in position and then it goes up to the next one which uh, also has a sort of plastic inserts for insulation uh, but there we go uh, odd circuitry but that is what's inside that sort of is it Laverno? Let me just grab the box Laverno indeed Laverno Lux 
That's what's inside one of these lights. It was extremely hard getting this to bits because it is glued. It's plastic, it's basically glued so solidly that the only way to get it out is to actually break things. So this is a disposable light. And the first one of these little five millimeter LEDs that fails means that ultimately, if it starts flickering or it burns out completely then, it's a case of disconnecting the whole light fitting and replacing it, uh, which I'm not keen in that. I prefer things that you can change lamps in individually. But this is how it's gone these days. It means that your average do-it-yourselfer is now being forced to do more and more electrical work. And in particular, in the case of this one, it feels they're going to be doing it outside with metal objects in a wet outdoor environment. It's not necessarily a good direction to go, but an interesting light nonetheless, and certainly well worth taking to bits.